Sarah, I have a simple request that may be more difficult than you think. All I'd like you to do is to tell me what a chair is. Well, you sit on it. Okay, I can sit on a bed. Is a bed a chair? No. Okay, a, a sofa. I can sit on a sofa. Is a sofa a chair? No, because you can fit more than one person on, on a sofa. Okay, so a chair seats only one person? Yeah. Um, how about a stool? Well, it doesn't have a back. Do, like. Well, the chair has to have a back? Yeah. Okay. Um, how many legs? Mm. Is there a three-legged chair? No. No. Well, you ordinarily you think of it, uh, a chair as having four legs. Yeah. Now you see, I asked you a very simple thing to define a chair, which you've uh, seen hundreds of them, right? And you yeah. know a chair when you see it, yet you had difficulty defining it. And the reason I wanted you to define it is because we're sort of going to investigate semantics, the science uh, that studies the meaning of words. And they have found certain sort of rules that I think you ought to know about because you use words all the time. Yeah. Uh, here are a bunch of uh, household furnishings. I would like you to separate them into chairs and non-chairs. Okay. Then see if we can define a chair properly. Gee, these are pretty small household furniture. Well, this is definitely not a chair because you can fit two people two on it. Two people there. on it, okay. More than one person. All right. This is not a chair because you can you lay on it. How about that? You can sit on that. That's four legs. Yeah, but you eat at it. It's a table. Okay. So here are all chairs. Notice, by the way, that scientists have said that words never say all about anything, and they always emphasize the similarities and not the differences. Look at the oh. chairs. See how they you're illustrating the chairness of something, yet you have eliminated the fact that these two have arms. You've yeah. not talked about the color at all, or the seat, or the fact that a child, a little baby, can sit in this one. So just remember, chair, the words never say all about anything, and they always emphasize the similarities. In fact, yeah. the only way, right here, to be sure that we both understand what we're talking about is to say, that is a chair, and you point to it. Oh, okay. So that means that you're not using words to define words, you're pointing to the thing. And that defines it. Yeah. That, by the way, is not a chair, right? Yeah, it's a footstool. It's a foot. No, no, no. I'll show you a footstool. Here, move those f those uh, pieces of, of dowel furniture out of the way, and I will show you a real footstool. <laughs> nice footstool. Isn't it a footstool? <laughs> It's a, a stool made out of feet, right? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, the designer of this was uh, using words in a special way called a pun, in which he was using the, foot, the idea of foot in two different ways. Ordinarily, you think of a footstool as something on which to rest your feet, right? Yeah. Right. This one is made of feet. Okay. Now, would you uh, carefully open this box? Because inside, there's a frog. Won't the frog jump out? Well, go ahead, open it. Uh. Take the frog out and put it right there. <laughs> that is a dressmaker's frog. And if you were a dressmaker and we were working together and I said, hand me the frog, you'd know exactly what I was talking about. So now I would. Words have special meanings depending on who says them because various professions have different words that have special meaning in them. In yes. fact, you probably thought I was going to have something like that, right? Yeah. But if you pointed to that and said frog, I would assume that a frog was made out of ceramics. So that's oh, not a frog either, is it? No, it's you just a how, ceramic. You see paper. how using words can very often lead to uh, different ideas entirely. And I have one idea as a, as a result of the using of the words, and you have an entirely different idea. Yeah. So, in fact, you can sort of think of words as maps for ideas. And maps never have all the information about a territory, do they? That's true. Yeah, okay. Then words have, can have many meanings. For example, what's the difference between determined and stubborn? Well, determined is when you are go you're confident that you are going to do this. Okay, that you that you're firm. Do something. You're firm, yeah. right? But isn't that firm too? Seven is when you're unusually firm. Unusually firm. Okay, it has a negative connotation. You know what the word connotation yeah. means. So words have have all kinds of meanings piled on top of this simple meaning. How about this? 
Well, boss sort of gives you the impression that a boss is really bossy. Bossy could be, right? An employer? An employer hires employees. Well, in other words, and people, scientists people work very hard at using words that have as specific a meaning as possible. And if you notice, if you've ever read any scientific uh, papers, they seem sort of dry because they don't and use a boring. lot of colorful words and boring. Well, actually, they're using words as, uh, to be mean very specific things so other scientists who read them know exactly what they're talking oh, about. And okay. they don't use words like bossy or stubborn. <laughs> okay. Finally, what is a lozenge? Well, it's something you suck in to make your throat feel better. For sore throat? Yeah. As a matter of fact, a lozenge originally was a nice saying. Um, and when somebody died, they put the saying on a tombstone. So oh. then they put the saying in a diamond shape. So pretty soon, a lozenge was a diamond shape. And in <laughs> fact, in architecture today, there is a lozenge, a diamond shape. The architectures decks use it all the time. Then a cough drop manufacturer made cough drops in the diamond shape. <laughs> so pretty soon, they were called lozenges because of their shape. And here is the lozenge, right? Yeah. Not diamond shaped anymore oh, at all. Oh, they're circular. Yeah, they're circular because now the word lozenge means cough drop. Or, oh, you know, no. for, and while it originally meant a nice saying. So the reason I wanted to bring this up is that it depends on when the word was used. Because, oh, okay. well, a ref refrigerator 20 years ago meant something entirely different than it does today, right? In fact, um, who's that? Me. Well, that's, that's you. This is you several years ago. So they oh. could call this person Sarah a long time ago, right? But it's not me now. But it's not you now. Okay. okay. So now, so let's sort of summarize. First of all, words never say all about anything. Yeah. That they always emphasize the similarities and forget the differences. Yeah, and they depend on when they've been said. When they say them and who says them. Yeah. So be very careful. Words have all kinds of strange and wonderful meanings. Yeah.